All right, all right, I hear you. Let's do it. So this is the application that we're gonna be building together. And this is what I would call, at least in its current state, and you can find the GitHub repo in the video description below, it's a single database multi-tenant application. What do I mean by that? If I was to log in, usually within any application that you build for your users, your users can then add resources to their account, their team. And while the definition of multi-tenant can be maybe multiple users per resource, in this case, maybe I have a team and users under that team. Well, a team in a single database would be a multi-tenant application. But for this purpose, we're going to talk about what this looks like as is, and then we're going to make it suitable for a multi-tenant, multi-database application. So in its current state, I can create a new site. Let's say, call this the Laravel Daily. When I create a new site, that has its own subdomain associated to it. And multi-tenant doesn't necessarily just mean subdomains, but it, most of the time does mean that, where your users can maybe attach a custom domain, or maybe they just have subdomains. And in this case, what if we said that this is its own tenant. Well, it is because we could manage posts for that subdomain where we could say, let's just go ahead and call this, I want to tell the whole world. And maybe we can generate a paragraph here. Okay. Now, when we visit this subdomain, you can see here the Laravel daily dot discuss dot test. So this will be a multi-tenant application just in a very small form. Being able to turn this application, in this case, our discuss.test application, where we can create new sites and manage posts for that site. What if we just took all of that and put it into its own domain, its own tenant? So I could have an account on the Josh Siri.discuss.test, and there could be a Laravel.discuss.test that I could have a separate account, or my data wouldn't even intermingle between those accounts. But what are the different re versions of multi-tenancy? Let's take a quick look. So there are two different ways to do multi-tenant applications. There would be like the single database that we talked about, and this could be a wide variety of ranges within this, but it's mostly scoped queries where you could say, okay, give me the posts for the site. And I'm actually doing that in my application here. So if I was to say um, on the web route, I'm getting the site where the subdomain is equal to this subdomain, and then I'm getting the posts for that site. This is multi-tenancy. There's multiple sites, but I'm just doing it within a scoped query. But then you could also have scoped queries where you have that tenancy, where you can say, I have a whole tenant or a team or an organization, and each organization has users associated to that organization. So you could technically have two user accounts and they don't have necessarily have to be unique. Again, it's all single database options, but that would be like scope queries. And then what we're going to transition this application into is a scoped data multi-database application, where instead of scoping the query, we don't necessarily have to worry about it. We can just say, give me all of the sites on, or give me all the posts for this site, or give me all the sites because we don't necessarily have to worry about is that site associated with a subdomain. It's just all in one database. And in that case, you could have multiple users or each tenant, each account, each organization could be different. You could have different schemas. This video is sponsored by Terso. Terso is SQLite for production. And we know as Laravel developers, and if you're not a Laravel developer and you randomly stumbled upon this video, uh, Laravel loves SQLite. In fact, it's the default whenever you create a new Laravel project. So I thought Terso would be the best fit to show how can we use Terso with any multi-tenant application. And then if you want to take your learnings a little bit further down the road, how can we expand the application we're gonna build and make it even better with the offerings that Terso has to give. Plus, you can use the coupon code Josh Siri for 10% off. That's all one word, so practice spelling my name, J-O-S-H-C-I-R-R-E. 
we won't be able to get into all of the fantastic and wonderful things that Terso does phenomenally well in this video, but you'll get some tips on how to take your learnings to the next level in the sense of what could you build with Terso with some of the features that they give. But I'm glad that Terso is sponsoring this video so we can get a little taste into what does it look like to have SQLite for scale. The package that we're going to be using today to get us up and running as quickly as possible for this application to take it from that single database structure to a multi-database, multi-tenant application is tenancy for Laravel. This will be in the description below as well. So let's walk through the steps of how to install this so that we don't necessarily have to have scoped queries within our application. We can just have uh, multiple different versions of our application depending on who creates a subdomain. Anyone can log into that new subdomain or we'll call it tenant from here on out and then they could create their own sites and posts on those individual sites. So let's get started. The quick start in the docs is perfect way to get started with tenancy for Laravel. We're going to be going pretty quick in this video, and I'm not going to show myself coding through every single part of it. But if you're following along, this is what we'll do. We'll just follow these installation steps and then we'll get going. So composer require and install that run PHP artisan tenancy install. Then we can run the migrations that it's scaffolded for us. Register the service provider in bootstrapproviders.php. And then we can create a new tenant model. And since we want all of our models, all of our schema and migrations in one of each one of those tenants, we're not going to have too much in our central database and our central application. We're just going to go ahead and name it tenant. So I'm just going to grab this PHP artisan make model tenant. And then in the tenancy config, we just need to make sure that the tenant model is the tenant model that we created. So app models tenant. Now tenancy for Laravel is going to handle all of the stuff that you don't want to set up yourself in the case, in the sense that you don't necessarily want to have to write all of the boilerplate to say, okay, when someone visits a subdomain, I want to store all that cache and switch the database and do all that stuff. Tenancy for Laravel is going to do it all for us and we just have to configure our route. So in this case, we have a central database or a central tenant, and then we have our multi database. And so what we're going to do is just say, oh, we need this for all of our routes that are in our central database. So I'm just going to go to our web routes folder. I'm going to paste this in and now I'm just going to think of what actually needs to be accessible here. And that's really just going to be slash page and that's pretty much it let's add the domain we're using to the central domains so that's discuss.test and then we need our tenant routes and we're just going to wrap everything else in this so on our tenant routes we have this right here but since we're not using a initializing tenancy by domain we're going to use the subdomain class that's been given to us and then I want to just take everything else and put it into this group right here. And we also want to grab the auth routes as well. The tenancy config is where we're going to be making any changes that we want the tenancy package to use. A couple of things I want to make a note of here is the prefix is going to automatically create a new database for us based on the specific manager that we're using. So I'm just going to go ahead and hide the MySQL Postgres one so that we can only use SQLite. This is our central connection, whatever we have place in our DB connection. And then we could set a template tenant connection if we want to. This will be helpful down the road when we set this up with Terso. So setting this up within LiveWire 3, we need to add the configuration key middleware group to the tenancy provider. And we can do that tenancy service provider. And I believe this needs to go into the boot function. Yes bring in these classes and we'll use the subdomain. I'm going to go ahead and run PHP artisan migrate fresh just to get everything restarted. But there's a couple of things that I want to make note of first. So in our database, we have these migrations and now we have this new tenant folder. We basically want any migrations that we want to run on newly created databases in this tenant folder. It's posts, sites, jobs, cache. Ideally, we probably want most of, if not all of those in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and move it. And in fact, we probably just want, we also want the jobs folder maybe in the migrations as well, just in case. Same thing with the 
cache. So that way we have a cache in the central database as well as the tenant database. And now since we don't have a users table or we'll actually move the users table to the tenant, since we don't have a users table in the central database, we actually have to create a new session table for our central database. So we can do that with PHP artisan session table. And there we go. Now we have a cache, jobs, tenants, domains, and sessions. Let's take a look at the tenants. We have our tenant and we have our domain. And when we add a new subdomain, when we create a new tenant, then it just uses that as the subdomain. Again, this is a lot of magic that's happening under the hood. If you wanted to take a look and see how all this is happening or try to build it yourself, this is a great package to look at. Okay, now if I was to refresh this, you see we don't see any like login or register buttons. That's because in our route for our welcome page, I have this, does the route have a login? And it doesn't because we don't have any users table anymore. So. What do we do? Why don't here we make a way to create a new tenant? So that way we have this subdomain where we can add new sites. So why don't I do it like this? Why don't we remove all of this? And here we'll just make a live wire, maybe create tenant volt components. So we can say PHP artisan make volt create tenant. And then here in create tenant, what do we want to do? We want to use the tenant model. And the great thing about this multi tenancy package is if we want to create a new tenant, going back to the quick start, we just call it like we would a model. We could run tenant create, and then we just add a domain to that tenant, and then that's it we automatically have everything kickstarted for us. Now, how does that happen? In the tenancy service provider, you see a little bit of that. It's run by these things called events where we have a creating tenant and then the tenants created, we can create the database and migrate the database. And you can customize these and hook into them and do whatever you would like to do within all of these events. It just bundles it up for you behind the scenes. And this is what we could do uh, later on when we create a Terso database, we can use Terso's API to, when a tenant is created, create a new Terso database and make those connections and configuration strings happen behind the scenes. So we're going back to our create tenant component. This is where we need a form to have a subdomain to create our new discuss site. And that will create a whole new tenant, a new database, new migrations, everything associated to that subdomain. So I'm going to do this behind the scenes. And there we go in our create tenant function, which is what we're submitting this form with. All we're doing is creating the tenant and then we're creating a domain in this case, a subdomain, but the tenancy package adds the subdomains and domains in the same place. And then we're just redirecting to that app. In this case, the new tenant that we just created now in a real world scenario, especially if we are spinning up a new database when this happens, in this case that we're going to you know, hook into an API to create a new database within Terso, you probably would want this to be done in the background. And then maybe you will send an email when the new tenant, the new discuss site has been created, has been instantiated. But this will be good enough for now. So let's go ahead and try it out. Enter your subdomain, we'll say Laravel. And let's take a look. We have laravel.discuss.test slash register. Let's see what's happening. So going into our tenant routes, let's first, because we don't necessarily need this anymore, let's go ahead and get rid of that. And what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm going to just grab all of the routes in the auth route. And I'm just, we can go ahead and delete this and we'll go ahead and move them into the tenants. So that way they're all in this one middleware route group. So we can bring in the classes, verify email controller. There we go. So I had accidentally dragged the tenancy service provider into the migrations tenant folder along with everything else. So if we try this out, we say Laravel, create your discuss and ah, I think I think this is because there's still one extra step that we forgot to do within Livewire. So 
that yes, setting up universal routes within the tenancy for Laravel package ensures that the live wire requests can actually happen. So we need to uncomment the tenancy.features config universal routes. So if we go to tenancy config and in features, we should see universal routes. We need to uncomment that. And then in our middleware group, we need to add the universal. So that's going to be in tenancy or in the app.php bootstrap middleware group universal. And now we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and clear the cache just to be sure. Laravel and there we go. So now look what happened when we did that. If you see over here on the right, you see this tenant, a new database was created. And what we can do then is we treat that as its own tenant. So now it's automatically that tenancy package is automatically associating all the information to that database and that database alone. So if I was to turn this on, you see here, laravel.discuss.test, Josh, we have some redirects happening and that is because in our environment, another thing that I figured out within the tenancy package is we need to turn this to session driver file and that should be enough to do it. Let's see if we log in. There we go. Okay. It's probably because there are a bunch of different, if we do session driver database, it doesn't know which you know session to pull it from because we do need sessions enabled. We probably don't, but we, it, it's nice to have them enabled for our central database or whatever application you're using. Most of the time you probably have more things going on in the central database for live wire sake. We've turned the session driver to file, and then we can create a new site, the daily Laravel and create a new site. And uh -huh. now let's go ahead and change this. So there's a, it's instead of a subdomain for site, let's go ahead and change it to a path instead. What I'm going to do here is use a site subdomain. And then in our site management for the site, pass in the site variable, do something similar right here. There we go. So now we have the daily Laravel. We can view the site. There's no posts, but we can go ahead and manage posts. And let's go ahead and do the same thing for the post where right here, instead of the subdomain, we can go ahead and just say this instead. So we have the passing the site of site subdomain. And again, that's the tenant route that we created here. Where we have the site subdomain. And then instead of passing it as a subdomain of a subdomain, now that we have tenants, we have the ability to have this laravel.discuss.test slash site slash the daily Laravel. And now we have, at least locally, we have a multi-tenant, multi-database structure where if I was to create a new post of this is so much fun and let's go ahead and generate a paragraph for that. When we're viewing this site, we see all the information. Again, we didn't have to change too much of our code to make this happen. But now we have discuss sites that we can easily create a new user for. So and so if we go to discuss.test, let's do another one. We'll just say Josh Siri. Now I have a Josh Siri application a whole organization, a whole tenant where I can create new sites. I was, if I was to go, we could probably make this a little bit better for this page here. There we go. So now you have the ability to log in and I could have someone create a new user in my tenant. This is Josh Siri dot discuss dot test. So that's a rather simple way of getting a an application that we had in a single database with a scoped structure. Now we have a multi-database, multi-tenant structure. So how can we add Terso on top of this? And one thing I should know as well is that there's other packages within the Laravel ecosystem that you can do multi-tenancy with. So Laravel multi-tenancy by Spotsy is a great package as well. I opted for the tenancy one just because they make subdomains as well as that database creation and that event structure behind 
uh, new tenants being created so easily. They have a great page that compares it to other packages. The Spotsy one is great if you just want something rather simple to scope something, maybe even a single database to have that scoped structure, but within a single database. So within Terso, one of the things that I love, first off, Terso, even though they're sponsoring this video, I'm a huge fan of Terso. One of the things that I love, even just on their starter, the free plan, is you get 500 databases for free. Now think of this, if you were doing a multi-tenant database, multi-database application like this one, you get 500 users for free and they each have their own database. Now, why would you want to have multi-databases? There's three reasons for it. I would say one is that security was scoped, so you don't necessarily have to worry about, am I scoping this properly? Two, you have the uh, security of scalability, where a lot of people within things like SOC 2, if you're running a, a business who is looking into that, most of the time having multi-tenant databases just makes things easier down the line. And then three is any kind of backup or just scalability vertically as well as horizontally, where you only have to worry about uh, is if something goes down, if that database, for example, is out of commission, well, it's only mean to say, but it's only one user or one tenant, I should say. All of your infrastructure is not at risk just because one database, whether that was hacked or it failed in some way, shape or form, maybe you didn't have a backup that you needed. And that's a great way to think about why multi-tenant databases. What the starter kit, the starter plan is going to be incredibly fantastic for this where we can create databases programmatically. So let's go ahead and check at the documentation. There's two things about Terso that I absolutely love that we're, we're not gonna dive in completely today, but I wanted to take a look at as well. One of them is embedded replicas. This is where, and even within the Terso Laravel package, you automatically get this out of the box with the PHP libsql driver, but embedded replicas for a lack of better term, it replicates what you have stored in Terso in the cloud, but it replicates that on your own server as well. Locally, wherever you're hosting your application, you get your SQLite file and they're synced. Now, so any changes that are made locally are then pushed to the cloud into where your Terso database is set. And why would you have Terso? Well, you can have databases on the edge. You can have them all over the world but you can also have them embedded into your application as well. So they also say make it more flexible, suitable for various environments, VMs, VPSs, mobile applications as well. One of the other things I love is the multi-DB schemas. This feature is currently in beta, but here's why I love this and what we can experiment with as well. You can create a database, in this case, a parent schema database, and this is going to be perfect uh, for us within this application. We have our tenant, we have our tenant database migrations. Well, instead of having to create a new database within the API and then hook up into it and then migrate everything and then maybe something is out of date, the great thing within multi-database schemas is you create a database that is used as the parent schema database, and then you can create one or more databases that are used as the child databases. And then we can apply schema changes to all of those. That's just mind blowing to me because what we could then do is instead of having to worry about migrations within this tenancy package, we could just have one database that we connect to migrate all of these things. And then any new database, we replicate that database. We say this is a child of that database. And then if we make changes to the parent database, it says right here, it's automatically applied with that new schema. And we can do this all within the API. So we can say, I want to be a part of this group. Group is important because we could have one API token to access all of those databases when we're doing this multi-database application. And then the schema, we just want it to be associated to one database. So let's get Terso hooked up and then we'll take a look real briefly about some of these things that we could do and give you some tips on how to you know, keep going, keep learning, keep creating. 
So first off, the driver for Laravel. You'll have to install the libsql extension for PHP, and that link is right here in instructions, or you can use the Terso PHP install, especially if you are using something like Laravel Sale, for example. Within Laravel Herd, I think that this extension might be coming out soon, but you can just follow these instructions and it's relatively simple within herd you can install additional php extensions like this and that's what i did as well i added it to my php ini file let's go ahead and install the package register the provider and then we have a local database connection so this is going to be using the libsql connection or this libsql driver is going to be using the sync url to basically connect to terso grab your auth token from terso and then your database url and you can find that on the terso dashboard i've already created a uh, database for this purpose. I have a discuss central database. That's where we're going to be connecting locally. And then we have our tenant database, which is going to be the parent schema. So you can go ahead and grab the URL and then create a database token here. Then we need to add this libsql connection to the database.php connections array. So that can be just done right here. So now if I was to run PHP artisan migrate fresh, this is actually connecting to the Terso database. You can see here, it's taking a little bit longer because we're synced, we're connected. So now we have everything in memory within our SQLite connection here, but it's also synced to our Terso database. So here's some things I wanted to take it just a little bit further, just in case you wanted to do some digging on your own. So the first thing is what if we use the API to create these databases when we clicked create your discuss? The first step is making sure that your tenant within this tenancy package can connect to the libsql driver. And you see here that we don't necessarily have a libsql database manager. Now this would be a great idea to figure this out. I just created a brief mockup for this. So if I was to turn this into libsql, libsql database.php. And now here's the interesting parts is that if we were to take a look at the let's say the SQLite database manager, for example, it has the ability and the functions to create a database, delete a database, does the database exist, and then the connection config. So same thing with things like the Postgres one, you would just emulate this for libsql. We already have the driver to connect to all of this because that's the Terso Laravel driver. And so even with things like delete database, make connection config, I did a little bit of that with this libsql database manager where the connection config, we can set that to the URL that we're setting in the database. In this case, in the domain database, we can set the URL. Well, how do we do that? On the tenants table, this would be the perfect spot for a, a string of maybe the Terso DB URL. And that way we can set this and use this when we change into our connection string upon tenant. And again, this database manager is doing all the hard work for us when it comes to finding the subdomain. This is just telling us how to connect to the libs. Again, this isn't necessarily working. We're diving in a fast pace. I'm just saying this is what I would do if I was taking this one step further. And then in the tenancy service provider, this is where all of those jobs run when we need to create a new database or migrate a database, for example, we could probably comment those out because we can use that database migration schema that Terso provides for us. So what we could do here is make a new job. We could say PHP artisan make job create Terso database. And then here we could say create Terso database. And again, this is just uh, in theory, and of course, this is incredibly simple to do within the API, but within this create Terso database job, which we have automatically set up within this pipeline, we could just say, hey, let's go ahead and create a new child database. We just need an API token. We could set it to the specific group. 
and then we could set the schema. In this case, I already created a discuss-tenant database that would be the schema that it's associated with. And this just makes it a whole lot easier because after that's all created, then this is why we have that libsql database manager we can set the connection to say okay anytime we hit a new subdomain within our application laravel or josh siri or whatever that might be we can tell the terso database driver to switch that connection to the connection that we need now you can see here how the possibilities are endless not just within multi-tenant applications, but within the things that Terso gives you that just make things a whole lot easier, whether that be multi-database schemas or whether that just be the attached database function. This allows you to have the ability to say, okay, I have a database, but in my central database, I also have information that I need. How am I gonna do that? There are two separate databases, attach database. There's so many things that once you start thinking, oh, that would be really cool in this application. Oh, I have an idea for that I could use in this application. I think Terso gives you that ability, but hopefully this video gave you a little bit of ideas as well of how to take maybe a single scope, single database application and turn it into multi-tenant. Whether you're doing that on the edge with Terso or whether you're doing that just for fun, you can always keep learning, you can always keep building, you can find new ways to experiment with the things that you build. So keep learning, keep creating.